Today on The Joy of Editing, I want to take a look at the new control lines found in the new Nick Collection 6. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. Today it is the Nick Collection, Nick Collection 6 to be exact. I haven't done any Nick videos in a while, so today I thought I'd give you one. There's a new feature inside nick collection six and that is control lines and it's a pretty powerful feature you'll find it in most of the filters inside of the nick collection but today i want to center in on vivesa now i know a lot of us like to use smart objects when using uh third-party plugins for photoshop and normally what you'd have to do is duplicate your layer or stamp all your layers together like i'll just do a command or control j to duplicate my background layer and then we'd right click and convert to a smart object you don't have to do that with the Nick Collection. I'll show you. It's very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing the Nick Collection or any DxO products, as well as getting free trials, I have an affiliate link. It's right in the description below this video. Just click on it. That'll take you to the Nick store, and then you could purchase the products. And when you do that, I make a small commission, and that helps my YouTube channel out. And when you use that link, I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to please, if you enjoy my videos, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And also, leave comments and questions. I really want to hear from you. All right, then. Let's get started here. Let me go ahead and send this image into Vivesa. Now I have my Nick Collection 6 palette opened up here, and you'll find it right here, as well as all the different filters. So we'll just click on Vivesa, and that'll launch Vivesa. Don't you just love that name, Vivesa? How did they come up with that? I wonder. And here we are inside of Vivesa. Now, I want you to notice something about the smart object here. Once you're into Vivesa, see right down here at the bottom, it says convert to smart object. If you want to use smart objects, this is where you can do it right here. It's very simple. Just click on this right here. And now it says select the option to convert layer to smart object. And the plugin will function as a smart filter. The brush will be deactivated. Click OK. So that's a really simple and easy way of turning this into a smart object that you could come back to and alter the adjustments later. Plus, it's a real time saver. You don't have to duplicate your layer in Photoshop. You can just go ahead and launch your filter and then check on convert to smart object. So that's quick and easy. So let's go right to the control line and you'll find that control line right down here. Now up here are your global adjustments. You can adjust all your global adjustments, but I'm gonna jump right into this control line. Now, right here is your control point, and here is your control line. Let me click on control point first and put down a control point here. Now, we don't see any of the adjustments here, and it's been this way for quite a while in the Nick collection, but they brought something back. And if we come over here and you see this little icon right here, if you click it, now we have all the adjustments right here. So if you like working this way, when you put your control point down and using all your adjustments are all right here. Now you can toggle that off if you don't want by clicking that same icon again. And now we just have the size of the actual control point right here. I just wanted to show that to you. For now, I'll delete that because I want to go right into control lines. And this just said, do you really want to delete all selected local adjustments? Yes, delete now. You can toggle that off so it doesn't bother you each time. And now let's check out this new control line. Again, to get it, just click right here. And basically what it is, is a linear gradient. So let's say I want to adjust the sky first. So I'm just going to click right here and drag down. Now I wish they could constrain this. Uh, normally linear gradients, you could hold your shift key down and keep that constrained, but I don't see a way to do it. If anybody knows how to do it, let us know in the comments section below. And again, you can come over and toggle this on. And now you're going to have all your adjustments right here if you like to work that way. So you have a choice here. You can have this here or you could work over here with these adjustments down here. I'm going to go ahead and toggle that off for now. Now, here's something you can do if you want to see what this is affecting. If you hold your command key down on a Mac, control on a PC, click on this and hold your control or command key down and and then you could just move that a little bit and you can see that's the area that it is affecting. And now you can't drag, yes, you can. You can drag this as you're holding that, which you can see. So for instance, I wanna affect the sky. So I probably wanna come down into right, maybe right about here so I can get this whole part of the sky. 
Now, we can go ahead and adjust that with the luminance and chrominance. And to do that, what you would want to do is come here to control line and click this icon right here. And now we can see that mask again. And now what I like to do is take the luminance adjustment and just try to tighten that up. Just something like that. And we can work with the chrominance as well, just to get the right selection. But look how beautifully that's selecting that sky for us. This is something we can do as well. We can double click control line one and we could type in sky. And this is really nice because we can organize all the control points. We'll know what's happening here in these control points. I don't have to guess like what's on control line one, two, control point one, two. We can name control points, control line. So that's really nice. And we can also save our adjustment out as a preset. Say, for instance, I want to make a preset for adjusting skies and I'll use a control line. So I could save out a preset with a control line already in place. I could click on save preset, give it a name like sky and make sure you have checked on save with local adjustments and click save. Because when you do that, when you click on that preset, it's going to have the control line already there. Then you can move it around for each different image, you know, and you can even have some adjustments set over here and it remembers all that stuff. I'll click cancel, but you can save any of your adjustments as a preset. Pretty cool. And also I want you to take note, see this little eyedropper here. You can click on this and drag this and fine tune this adjustment as well. So watch, I can click this and see how I can move it around and affect the way that masking is working. So you can find the exact right point where you can get as much in of that area as you want. I think right there is good. And now if you'll click on this mask again, now we can start making an adjustment. For instance, on this, I may want to just darken up that sky a little bit and um, maybe pull the structure back a little bit because it's a little bit out of focus. Let's just smooth it out a little bit, maybe something like that. And uh, maybe give it just a tad of contrast. Not much, just a tiny little bit. Something like that looks good. And then you could come here, see where the check is. You could toggle this adjustment off. There's the before and there's the after. So pretty cool, just affecting the sky. Now let's make another one for the back mountain. By the way, there is a shortcut to get the control line, and that is Command or Control L. And that will get you a control line. And who doesn't like a nice shortcut? So for this mountain, I think I'll click right here and drag down to somewhere right about here. Now again, let's hold our Commander Control key down. Let's click on this circle first. Now hold your Commander Control key down and we can just move this and we can see there it is right there. Now I can pull this down further. Let me see if it works on this one. I'm going to click on here, Commander Control L. Yeah, it works on that point too. So I'm going to pull this down to maybe right about here is about the bottom of the mountain and it just fades off really nice like and don't forget, we have this guy right here. So let's try this eyedropper first. So let's go ahead and come over to this control line, click on the mask so we can see the mask. And let's grab this little eyedropper here and see if we can get a good selection in here. We could try different points. And I think maybe right there looks pretty good. Now we can tweak this up and drop out that sky. Let's go to luminance. And I'm going to start to drag this to the right. Now, if you drag it to the left, more of that sky will come in. If I drag it to the right, I'll start to drop that out. It's just looking for the luminosity on that mountain, more, more or less. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but I can get it close, maybe right around there, and let's work with the chrominance. Okay, and right there, I think that's a pretty good adjustment right there. And now let's click on the mask icon so we can see the image again, and now let's make an adjustment. Now this time, I'm going to go ahead and click this on, and now we can come over here and adjust right from here. So let me darken that down a little bit with brightness. Just darken it down a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of structure right here. Click this and drag it to the right. We'll add a little bit of structure in there, not too much. Let's give it maybe a little bit of saturation. A little bit of saturation. And then maybe let's warm it up a little bit. So I'm going to drag this slider and move it to the right. Yeah, let's just warm it up a little bit to fit in with this desert scene I guess or is this mud I don't know this is a stock image by the way okay so there we go and then we have all these different things we can do as well we can work with highlights midtone shadows and blacks maybe I'll go to blacks and just 
add a little extra darkness right in there to the really deep, dark, shadowy areas right there. Now let's take a look. If we click this check, here's the before and here is the at. Oh, I'm on the wrong control. I'm on the sky. Did you see that? Okay, I'm leaving this in. I want to be on this one. Here's the before and here is the after. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and double click control line two and let's call this mountains because you know what? We want to stay organized. And then if we come up here to compare, if you click, if you left click and hold, you can see the before and after what we've done so far. And so far, so good. I think I'll adjust this foreground area and we'll be done. But aren't these control lines cool? And let me know in the comment section below what you think of these new control lines. I think they're pretty darn powerful. I'll do another command or control L to pick up another control line. And the cool thing about the control line is we can adjust a large portion of the image with that control line, which I think is really great. I'm going to click right here and I'll start to drag this up into right about here. I'm going to click on this point and hold my command or control key down and move this a little bit. And now I can see how far I want this to come up. And right to the base of that mountain, right about there, I think is really good. And I think we'll leave it at that. And now let's go ahead and turn that mask on so we can really see what we're doing. And don't forget, we have the eyedropper tool here. We can move this around. Oh, yeah, like right. Whoops, right there looks pretty good. And now I want to encompass this whole area here. So this time, I think I'll take the luminance slider, move it to the left. You see that? And I can get a lot of that in there. Okay. And let's work with the chrominance as well. Okay. So something right around there. I think that is perfect. Let's click on the mask icon again. And now we can see our image. And now let's adjust. If you watch my TK Friday videos, I'm all about balancing out your image. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. Balance the sky, the mountain, and the foreground to give me a nice, beautiful, evenly balanced out image with just the right amount of contrast. I call that balance and contrast, by the way, in TK Fridays. And it's the same thing here. It's just a different way of doing it. Oh, and by the way, you have luminance and chrominance here as well. If you're in the mask mode, that's really helpful to adjust it. You can even use it if you're not using the mask mode and just look at the image and see how it's affecting it. But I think I'll start with brightness. So I'm going to click on the brightness slider and let's just darken this up a little bit here. Again, to try to balance it out. Maybe I'll pull the saturation back just a little wee bit, not much, maybe to right about there. And now we'll give it some structure. Take this to the right. I don't want to go too far because it's going to look not correct. So you got to be careful in adjustments, make them subtle. And let's see if a little warmth helps here. I don't know if it will or not. I don't know, maybe just a tad of warmth. And now I may have to pull my saturation back a little bit more. To maybe that's eh, too much i think right about there okay so let's take a look here is the before and here's the after and i think it's balancing out nicely and now let's go ahead and name this foreground okay so there we go now let's take a look here is our overall before and here's our after it's nicely balanced out and that was pretty simple and pretty easy to do then we can come back up to the global adjustments and maybe I don't know, maybe pull the brightness back just a little bit, maybe somewhere right around there. And um, I think that's good. Again, here's the before and here's the after. And again, we could save this out as a preset if we want to. And then we can click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop as a smart object. Now you'll notice it is a smart object. So now we could go back and alter that later. So that is the new control lines in the Nick collection. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. I think you're going to love them. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. And these new control lines are pretty darn cool inside of the Nick collection six found in most of the different filters. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.